This question, Bharshi, from the Community Television, Montgomery Community Television in Rockville, Maryland. Many sages have talked about the illusory nature of life. What is it about our experience that is illusory? And what is the experience of one who has awakened from that illusion? It's very easy to know what illusion is. If one has ever seen a dream, and then he wakes up, then he is woken up from the dream. That is illusion. <laughs> that is experience of illusion is in the state of dream. And you wake up, and the dream is over, finished. Whatever tigers have been pouncing on you in the dream, but when you are awake, nothing else is there. That's what a dream is. The ultimate analysis. <laughs> hmm? You want to know the ultimate analysis of knowledge about the world? One example, one little example, don't be afraid of it, because the conclusion is very dramatic, but doesn't matter. Let it be a conclusion <laughs> to be derived through proper steps of logic and mathematics, but take the result. The result is that the world is like a snake in the string. The string is there, but when you are not able to see the string properly, then you make a snake out of it. And when you see the snake in a string, then the snake has a different world, crying and running about and shouting and this, a world of its own. So there is a world of snake and there is a world of string. The snake world is just like illusion. And when you are awake, when you know, when you know the string, then there was no snake, there was no snake. Like that is the illusion of the world. So those fortunate teachers of reality who have declared the world to be an illusion, they are real masters, master guides of humanity because ultimate conclusion of total knowledge they have given to the people and they have explained to them. And there is a whole big logic that precedes this conclusion that this neck is just an illusion, the reality is Atma. Now the snake is just this physiology. Today in this generation, if a, a, a physiologist, a physiologist, a scientist have proved that every fiber of physiology, every fiber of physiology in creation is an impulse of consciousness, consciousness. And consciousness is consciousness, is pure intelligence. Now pure intelligence has created this kind of, this kind of body, this physiology, my body, your body, his body, that body, here, there. So these are all the various expressions of the one reality of consciousness, and that alone is, Sanskrit expressions of that are Atmai Vedam Sarvam. Atma is all this. All this is Atma Chetana. Chetana is consciousness, self-consciousness, self-referral consciousness is all that there is. The rest is whatever you may call it. It's a transitory thing. It's a concept. Just if, for the example, dream. Dream is very real during its uh, prevailing. As long as it prevails, it's very real. This is a tiger, this is the rabbit, and this and this. But once the dream is over, 
you are in the waking state, different state of consciousness. And all these different states of consciousness, huh? there are seven states of consciousness. Waking, dreaming, sleeping, transcendental consciousness, cosmic consciousness, God consciousness, unity consciousness. Seven states of consciousness. The three states of consciousness experienced by everyone. Everyone is sometimes waking, sometimes sleeping, dreaming, sometimes deep sleep. So waking, dreaming, sleeping, three states of consciousness. And when he meditates, transcendental meditation, he gets to the fourth state of consciousness, transcendental consciousness. And the influence of transcendental consciousness in the waking state, it makes it cosmic consciousness. And more refined value of consciousness makes it God consciousness. And ultimate total value is in terms of unity consciousness, unified wholeness. So there are seven states of consciousness. When people are not educated in these seven states of consciousness, then they have to remain between this waking and dreaming and sleeping and waking, dreaming, sleeping. And in that, they have to go through, the, through all these uh, uh, imaginary things for time and all that, all that, all that. Vedic knowledge means knowledge of all the seven states of consciousness and substantially supreme level of consciousness, unity consciousness. We have been teaching the transcendental consciousness to the people for 40, 50 years now. And now so many millions of people out of them, quite a big number of people, they are experiencing this fifth state of consciousness, that cosmic consciousness, God consciousness, unity consciousness. Therefore, now is the time of the world to have an administration, to have a management of that supreme quality of life, which we say unity, consciousness. This is not an imaginary concept. It's a reality of world consciousness today that there are the seven states of consciousness and quite a few people doing it now are purifying world consciousness and due to that rising purity in world consciousness, what has happened is a scientist is born, a scientist is born to say every aspect of physiology, every fiber of physiology is nothing but the impulse of consciousness, consciousness, consciousness. And this on the level of research. Research means modern expression of reliable language. So Dr. Rajaram, doc, yes, doctor, he was when he did this research and he was weighed in gold. A scientist weighed in gold is the fir first happening in the centuries or the ages of the world's life. But the reward was that the whole physiology which is a dumpy place, nothing of consciousness, but that came out to be all consciousness and nothing else. That's why he was weighed in gold, and then when it was found that he has a mind which can give to the world a distinct, a, a very special theme of administration so that the administration would be so competent as to fulfill the requirement of all the people in the country 
so that they never create a problem for themselves. Problems are created when the administration doesn't fulfill the requirements of the individual. So the individual strains, and in straining, he loses his, his compactness, his sense, and then he shouts any wild things here and there and there. So it is the straightening out of the administrative skills, and this came out to be through education. Administration through education, through proper education, that the full brain will be put to use. And the full brain is put to use only, underline the word only, huh? full brain physiology is used only when the experience of transcendental, unbounded consciousness comes to direct experience. At that moment, total brain is being used. So transcendental meditation taught to the students in their growing age, in their student age, will make everyone use his full brain and full brain of the individual has the potential of the full cosmos, ever expanding universe. That creativity is there within the individual of everyone. Transcendental meditation, enlivening the full creative potential of the brain physiology, enables a man to function from the level of total knowledge. Total knowledge is very, very, it's a very simple thing. But it has to be put to practice, that's all. That is why our focus is on enabling every man through Vedic education and practical aspect of Vedic education is, apart from all those mathematical calculations and theories and all of consciousness, apart from that, the experience of transcendental consciousness. And this will create a very developed man, highly enlightened individual, and the world or society of enlightened individuals will create permanent peace on earth, brotherhood of mankind, all helping everyone, all helping one's own self, one's own self. So it was very good this afternoon. It's very good, the questions from the press, so intelligent. We'll continue on this march of intelligence here towards perfection. Huh? Jai Guru Dev.